Well, it was a year ago that we first told you about an effort underway to study a sunken ship believed to be from the War of 1812. If historians are correct, the vessel was once used to fight off the British as they advanced towards the nation's capital. Patricia Vallone recently took a tour of the excavation site, which lies along the Patuxent River in Upper Marlboro. It's hard to believe that these serene waters were once the site of a ferocious battle to save our nation's capital. But nearly two centuries ago, Joshua Barney and his fleet tried unsuccessfully to stave off the British. He ordered his ships sunk rather than let them get into enemy hands. Last year, a project began to find out the true nature of a ship located 30 years ago along this channel. Just over my shoulder here on the Patuxent River, you can see where archaeologists are excavating what they hope is the USS Scorpion. It is part of Commodore Joshua Barney's flotilla, Chesapeake flotilla, and of course we're approaching the bicentennial commemoration of this war, so it's very significant that we have a chance to look at this now and plan for a longer term um, excavation and study of this vessel. It may well be the USS Scorpion, which was Barney's flagship. It may not. It may be one of the other flotilla vessels, but as a very large artifact, we're terribly intrigued by it, and it's, it's um, immeasurably valuable as it is. What we're doing out here on the project this year is we're trying to determine the length and the width of the wreck. Nobody knows what it is. It's not reckon, uh, written in the historical document whatsoever. And we found that it's 75 feet long and 20 feet wide, which when you're looking at it from the surface and you're seeing those little white uh, pieces of, of piping sticking out. It seems like it's a pretty good shipwreck, but when you dive inside of it and begin to feel around, you can just feel the, the, the massiveness of the timbers. You can feel where the hold was. You can even feel where those little compartments where the sailors would have put their, their rations and personal belongings. Divers take turns going down into the murky water. Occasionally, they bring up some interesting artifacts. I don't expect to find any guns here. It would be really nice if there were, but a lot of this st stuff was taken away to Bladensburg for the battle. Uh, or would have been salvaged. Guns were pretty important, so uh, it may be they, they dropped a couple guns off on the side. We may find some, some remains of ordnance, uh, a few pieces of solid shot that they left behind. If we can find that, then that'll basically be able to tell us what kind of caliber guns they had on board. We found a stave from a cask, which could be a food cask or a uh, powder cask. We found an, an interesting nubbin of chalk, which could have been the ship's carpenter. Um, it could have been used for, it might even be white lead for um, whitening leather. Um, I think it's chalk and I think it was probably the ship's carpenter, but we don't know this yet. This is the second part of the excavation. In phase three, archaeologists hope to temporarily drain the water surrounding the shipwreck to study it further. After that, the ship will eventually return to its watery grave in order to preserve it for future generations. From the Patuxent River, Patricia Vallone, CTV News. And after sailing up the Patuxent, the British took Bladensburg in 1814 and eventually captured and burned Washington, D.C. Looking back at all that, it's hard to believe that all that happened here. Because, you know, we're so used to going to Bladensburg and just kind of, you know. Patty gets all the exciting shoots. <laughs>